This presentation is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus video series. In this video, I'll discuss the scoring guidelines for the 2017 AP Calculus exam, Free Response Question AB2. My name is Steve Kokoska. I'm a professor at Bloomsburg University in Pennsylvania, and I am a former AP Calculus chief reader. Here is an outline of the information presented in this video. I'll start by reviewing the free response question, and then the scoring guidelines used at the AP Calculus reading. I'll present a brief general summary of student performance on this question, and then I'll consider more detailed interpretations of the scoring guidelines, and how these guidelines were applied in certain situations. I'll consider some common student errors, and where appropriate, I'll present some specific scoring examples. In this contextual problem, the setting is a grocery store selling bananas. There are initially 50 pounds of bananas on the display table, and customers remove bananas at a rate modeled by the function f. In addition, after three hours, store employees begin to replenish the display table by adding bananas at a rate modeled by the function g. Note that both of these functions, f and g, are rate functions. In part a, how many pounds of bananas were removed from the display table during the first two hours the store was open? In part b, we need to find f prime of 7 and interpret this value in the context of the problem. In part c, we need to determine if the number of pounds of bananas is increasing or decreasing at time t equal 5. And finally, in part d, we need to find out how many pounds of bananas are on the display table at time t equal 8. Here are the scoring guidelines for this question. Part a was worth two points. One point for presenting the correct integral, which includes the limits of integration, and one point for the final answer. Part B was also worth two points. One point for the correct value of f prime of 7, and one point for conveying the correct meaning of this value in the context of the problem. Part C was worth two points. The first point is a conceptual point for considering the values of f of 5 and g of 5. The second point is for stating the correct answer with an appropriate reason. And finally, part D was worth three points. Two points for the integrals and one point for the final answer. Here are some brief comments about student performance on this question. In general, students made the connection between the definite integral and net change. Most seem to understand the concept of using the definite integral as an accumulation function. However, some students misinterpreted the function f. This is a rate function in this problem. Strangely, some students confused this problem with particle motion problems. Some actually included the terms velocity and acceleration in their answers. Some students used imprecise or inaccurate language in their explanations. This seems to be a common error in contextual problems. And some students used derivatives and definite integrals when they weren't necessary. This is perhaps related to a misinterpretation of the rate functions. Just a quick reminder here, this was a calculator active problem. And when scoring this type of problem, we often look for a correct mathematical expression and then simply the final answer. And these mathematical expressions or setups must be presented using mathematical notation, not calculator syntax. And we do have very prescriptive, specific decimal presentation rules for scoring. And remember that final answers must be presented with three digits to the right of the decimal rounded or truncated. Here are some general comments related to scoring this problem. The functions f and g are rates, and in each part of this question 
We must be convinced that the student is indeed working with the appropriate rate function in the appropriate manner. For example, in parts A and D, the student should be using a rate function in an integral, in part B, a derivative, and in part C, they should be using the given rate functions. Unfortunately, some students still place their calculator in degree mode, and there is a well-established rubric for first confirming that the student is in degree mode, and then for scoring the response. Note that units are only required in Part B of this question. And the student can certainly use the actual expressions for f and g, but it's prudent to use the function name. Using the actual expression could result in just a simple copy error or another more critical error. And we've developed a pretty good rule to treat a missing differential in an integral, in this example a missing dt. If a dt is not present, it is assumed to appear to the right of the last term after each integral symbol and before a comparison symbol. The first point in Part A is for the correct definite integral. This is a conceptual point. We're looking for the correct setup, or rather, the correct mathematical notation. Since units are not required here, we will ignore all units presented in scoring this part. Bluntly, this first point is earned for presenting the correct definite integral. If a student makes a mistake in writing f of t, but we're still convinced they mean f of t. They would earn the first point, but not the second or the answer point. And this first point can be earned if the student includes an extra constant, but still has the correct definite integral. In this first example, the student would earn the first point, but not the second. And in the second example, the student would not earn either of the two points in part A. The second point in Part A is for the answer, the value of the definite integral. It is earned for the correct numerical answer, 20.051. If the student presents an indefinite integral or no integral, and the correct answer, they would earn the answer point, but not the integral point. So this is scored as a 0, 1. And if they had incorrect limits or bounds on the integral, but the correct answer, this is treated as a presentation error, and it's scored as a 0, 1. In Part B, the first point was for finding the value of f prime of 7, and the point was earned for presenting the value minus 8.120 or minus 8.119, even if the value was unlabeled. If this point is earned, the student cannot then lose it, at the reading, we say that the point is in the bank. The units are connected to the second point and the meaning of the value. And the student could present an exact symbolic numerical answer. It isn't necessary here. This is a calculator active question. And I think in doing so, it presents more of a chance of making an error. The second point in Part B was for the meaning of the value f prime of 7. This point was earned for explaining the meaning of minus 8.120 in the context of the problem. And there was an eligibility criteria here. The student must have produced a value for f prime of 7. And if the value is incorrect, it has to be labeled as f prime of 7. Now the meaning of f prime of 7 actually involves three items. The correct units, here pounds per hour squared, an appeal to the time, t equals 7, and the units were not necessary. And finally, evidence of a correct interpretation as a rate of a rate. There were some subtleties in reading for the second point in Part B. For the first condition, associated with the meaning, the correct units, bananas are not equal to pounds. Here are two acceptable unit presentations, and one incorrect presentation. For the second condition, an appeal to the time, t equals 7, the student must convey the idea of an instant or moment in time, not an interval. 
So the student can say when or at t equals 7, but not in 7 hours or after 7 hours. And there were still other issues in Part B. First, the interpretation presented had to imply that the function f is changing. Here's an example of a correct interpretation, which implies that f prime is less than 0. And here's an incorrect interpretation, which implies that f is less than 0. And remember, the context in this problem is bananas. And here are a few incorrect statements involving bananas. And statements about decreasing or changing must agree with the value of f prime of 7. Here are two examples of incorrect statements. In the first statement, the rate is decreasing at a rate of 8.12, not minus 8.12. And in the second, the rate is changing at a rate of minus 8.12. The first point in Part C is for considering f of 5 and g of 5. And remember, this is a conceptual point. The student does not have to present values for f of 5 and g of 5. They simply have to convey that they know we need to consider these two values. However, verbal descriptions without explicitly stating f and g are a little too vague. But the student can earn this point if we're convinced they're working with t equal 5, and we're convinced if we see the correct values for f of 5 and g of 5, or g of 5 minus f of 5. And the student must appeal to f of 5 and g of 5 only. If they believe the derivative or a definite integral is necessary here, they would score 0, 0 in this part. The second point in Part C was for the correct answer with an appropriate reason. And there was an eligibility criteria here. The student must first consider f of 5 and g of 5, and if the student presents values for f of 5 and g of 5, they must be correct. So a student could not score a 0, 1 in Part C. And here are some examples of minimal answers in Part C. Each of these would score 1, 1 in Part C. In Part D, the first two points were for the integrals one point each for the definite integrals in the expression for total pounds of bananas on the display table. Now, any attempts to combine these definite integrals and or to incorporate the initial condition are considered part of the third point. And if a resulting expression contains one or both of our definite integrals, we would award appropriate credit. In this first example, the expression contains the correct definite integral involving f. In the second example, the correct definite integral involving g is presented. And in the third example, we actually have both definite integrals, and this would earn two points. The third point in Part D was for the answer, and it was earned for the correct numerical value, 23.347. Now, there was one exception to this imperative. If the student missed the domain restriction on the function g and presented this expression with this numerical answer, they would earn one of the first two integral points and the answer point. If there was a presentation error like the one shown here, the student would also earn 1, 1 in Part D. And if the student linked unequal expressions with equal signs, as in this example, they would not earn the third point. At the AP Calculus reading, an actual briefing for the scoring of a free response question usually takes approximately 75 minutes. And there is also time allotted in the reading rooms for discussion before the actual scoring begins. However, I hope this summary video gives you a good idea of how this question was scored. And just a reminder, there are lots of valuable resources on the TI website. There's material there involving technology and calculus, classroom activities, and lots of calculator tips and tricks for test success.